Hello guys, welcome again to Intellect Medicos, where learning is made easy. I am Dr. Chirag Madan, working as an intensivist ICU consultant at Apollo Hospital, New Delhi. First of all, I would like to thank all of you guys for the love and support and the feedback you have shown to our previous videos, mainly the last two videos. One was on how to read a chest x-ray, the other on the lung sounds. Thank you so much guys. And also I like to tell you all that I have got so many requests about the ECG interpretation. So there is uh, my video on this channel with the name of how to read ECG. And that is a 10 minute video which has gained 2.9 million views all because of you guys. So go check this link in the description below. Right. And also there is a link shown over here. So coming on to today's video. So now in today's video, we have shown approach to a patient with respiratory discomfort or respiratory distress. So let's begin. So today we will discuss a case. A 40 year old male presents to you in an emergency with respiratory discomfort. The heart rate of a patient is 120 per minute. The blood pressure is 100 by 60 millimeters of mercury. Respiratory rate of a patient is 25 per minute and the patient is somewhat drowsy. So how will you approach this patient? Pause this video and think about the management. How will you approach? Seriously, pause this video, please. And think about it. Okay, so now uh, what I have seen in so many years with the juniors working in our hospital, other hospitals in the emergency in the wards is first and foremost thing which comes to the mind whenever you see a tachycardia and low BP is to give fluids. Second, patient is tachypneic and they seem to have respiratory distress. So obviously attach a oxygen and third is give the nebulizers. So this is a universal thing which I have seen for so many years. But this is a very, very, very bad management of the patient. Very bad. Why? All because you have given, let's say, 500 ml bolus saline because you have seen tachycardia and low BP. But after giving your bolus of 500 ml, I give you a history. The patient is CKD and has not been dialyzed for past three days. So congratulations, patient is already fluid overloaded and this distress is because of fluid overload and you have also given 500 ml to it. So secondly, now uh, you have given nebulizers, you have waited for next 5-10 minutes till there is a respiratory discomfort. After, after 10 minutes, I give you a history that patient has a trauma of head and neck area. So yeah, so it could be your pneumothorax and your nebulizers will not work. So this is the importance of having a good history. So whenever you have to approach a patient, have a good detailed history. But if patient doesn't give you time, I mean the condition of the patient, as in this case, I mean there is a tachycardia, BP is low and obviously uh, the sensorium is also drowsy. So in these kind of situations, you can't go for a detailed history. You just need to have a brief history. So you can remember this brief history by a mnemonic sample. Sample S stands for sign and symptom. So you have seen the signs of the patient. In symptoms, you can go for asking whether there is any cough, fever or sputum production. So that means you are thinking in terms of pneumonia consolidation. Nowadays, very important thing to ask is about the COVID. I mean, any contact with the COVID, a recent contact with the COVID patient or any COVID immunization. Third, you ask about chest pain or angina so as to rule out any cardiac pathology. Then fourth, you ask about the dyspnea or breathlessness, whether it is at rest, whether it is during exertion or lying down or sitting position. So these symptoms also help you make a diagnosis. So this is very, very important. So you have asked the basic symptoms, right? So as to rule out some of the, uh, some of the differential diagnosis. Next comes the A, which stands for allergies. Now let's say this patient has taken Augmentin for some reason, I mean for UTI or some kind of fever. So obviously this presentation could be anaphylaxis. And when the BP is going down, the patient is hypotensive, that means patient is going into shock. That means anaphylactic shock. 
so until unless you don't go for the drug of choice that is adrenaline you, i mean your all the efforts are useless giving fluids giving oxygen giving nebulizers this will not work at all so again the importance of history now next comes the medication the third medication the patient is on so if if the relative gives the history that patient is on is a has a history of copd or asthma and usually takes mdi and for the past 5 days the, or 3 days patient is not taking that mdi that those inhalers so for sure this could be exacerbation of copd or asthma right now the other thing is p p stands for past medical history so in this you need to ask again the cardiac any cardiac previous cardiac diseases any renal kidney disease any liver disease any surgical any bleeding history any history of uh, previous treatments so this is past medical history and then l stands for last meal time now now why this last meal time has an importance over here because in these kind of situation where patient is drowsy on the verge so these conditions are called as peri arrest so patient is not yet arrested but is near about so the, the, in these kind of peri arrest scenario patient is actually drowsy right now and can be unresponsive in next few minutes so uh, whenever the patient becomes unresponsive the first and foremost thing which happens is the blunting of the reflexes the pharyngeal and laryngeal reflexes that means patient is at risk of aspiration so you need to have that history also and the last e stands for previous events so this is how you have a brief history but again if patient is deteriorating and i mean let's say patient is becoming more drowsy there is more distress the bp is falling obviously many a times what happens in the icu in the emergencies we have to skip this we have to skip the history part and directly we have to approach we have to go for the next thing which is the examination part right so next important thing after the history comes examination now uh, first and foremost thing is you have to have a general survey so whether the patient is looking toxic or normal whether the patient is lying on the bed comfortably or is not comfortable then the build of the patient whether the patient is thin built average built or obese patient because this also matters right now uh, in main examination if you talk about examination and uh, we are talking about respiratory system the first and foremost is the inspection so from a distance you see the movement of the chest and compare right and the left side so let's say the left side of the patient is not moving then that goes in favor of either pneumothorax or pleural effusion or any other pathology right so that is actually helping you to come to a diagnosis or narrow down your all the differential diagnosis coming on to the next step of examination that is palpation now in palpation you palpate the patient and you see the temperature second you see any kind of tenderness which goes in favor of your rib fracture it could be musculoskeletal also but rib fracture that has a importance because uh, in trauma patient there there can be rib fracture which can cause lung contusion pneumothorax hemothorax right and the next in palpation could be your palpation of the trachea so after inspection palpation is also important but uh, again if patient is deteriorated you directly go on to the next step that is percussion in percussion you have to percuss both the sides and uh, they could be normal or resonant and then if it is hyper resonant or the other term used is tympanetic which is going in favor of pneumothorax then there could be dullness uh, while doing a percussion so this dullness could be woody or stony but frankly speaking it is very difficult to differentiate between a stony and a woody dullness right but as far as your medical examination is concerned your woody dullness goes in favor of consolidation your stony dullness goes in favor of pleural fusion so this is the third part that is the percussion now comes the fourth which is very important that is the auscultation part which i have uh, uploaded a video recently about a lung sounds so how do you hear these kind of sound you can have the link in the description box below and the link over here as well okay so so this was about the examination part of only the respiratory system
if you have a time the patient is conscious there is no hurry then obviously you have to have a detailed examination from head to toe having the cns examination the respiratory examination the cardiac examination everything right now we have talked about the history the examination of a patient and now comes the investigation which is very very important i mean and uh, whenever you have these kind of patient the first test you need to check or you need to do is blood sugar then comes the importance of abg i mean we are talking about respiratory system the patient is is in distress so obviously you send a abg that is arterial blood gas analysis and you can read about the interpretation of abg with the link in the description below and also over here so and i'll upload the second part of this video soon and next coming on to the other investigation is chest x ray but uh, if you are suspecting a pneumothorax that will not give you time i mean tension pneumothorax so if you are ordering an x ray you are getting an x ray done then the reporting of the x ray or the uploading of the film so nowadays what we used to do in our icus in our emergency is ultrasound so that is called as pocus point of care ultrasound so in that we can see the pneumothorax the pleural effusion the consolidation pulmonary edema having the b lines curly b lines so this is a very very important investigation or you can say equipment the ultrasound right uh, now after the x ray and ultrasound comes the importance of ecg to rule out any cardiac pathology and if you think this is a cardiac origin and obviously you are getting any kind of uh, st elevation in the ecg obviously you have to send the cardiac biomarkers as well and coming on to the next investigation is the hrct chest if your x ray is inconclusive and you are still thinking this is a respiratory pathology obviously you have to go for ct chest now apart from all these investigation you need to send the routine investigation according to your hospital protocol so the cbc that is complete blood count the kfts that is kidney function test or renal function test and lfts that is liver function test so these are the investigation which we normally send for these kind of patients so we have completed the history the examination of patient the investigation now come the most important part that is the treatment part now the treatment depends on the pathology i mean it depends whether there is a pneumothorax or diffusion or edema or asthma it depends on the pathology there is no point giving fluids or oxygen or nebulizers to a patient having a pneumothorax that is a useless you are wasting the precious time of a patient right so if there is a pneumothorax and that to a tension pneumothorax obviously you have to decompress it so previously we used to decompress using a needle in the second intercostal space that to in the mid clavicular line but in 2018 that to in atls guidelines they say you can decompress you have to decompress with a needle in the same place that is fifth intercostal that to anterior to the mid axillary line the place where we used to put icds so icd as well as needle decompression same place fifth intercostal anterior to the mid axillary line right so this is for the tension pneumothorax let's say patient has a pulmonary edema so this could be either cardiac origin or non cardiac origin in cases of fluid overload you have to give a diuretic next come the other pathology which could be pleural effusion that means there is a, a fluid accumulation inside the pleural cavity you can find the link in the description below right i have a video on that and the link over here as well so uh, if this is contributing to the respiratory distress of a patient obviously you have to tap it you have to remove that that video also i have i have discussed how much is the maximum amount which you can remove from the pleural cavity i mean the maximum fluid which can be removed if at all you increase that amount what can happen what is the complication for that you can go and check that video okay coming on to the other pathology which could be asthma or a copd exacerbation of copd or asthma so in these kind of patient obviously you have to give bronchodilators and iv or injectables of steroids so this is how we proceed and this is how we manage i mean beat any patient again the same thing be cardiac respiratory abdominal any or gu urinary urinary any patient you have to follow this history examination investigation and then the treatment don't directly jump onto the treatment if at all you don't have time still you have to do a basic examination of a patient
right so that you don't waste and you don't put unnecessary efforts into the management of the patient so that was all about it about how to approach a patient with respiratory distress if you like this video do hit the like button and do share with your friends and colleagues and do not forget to subscribe the channel for the latest updates and i would like to have your comments your feedback on this video because this acts as a fuel to the motivation to upload more and more videos so that's it thank you so much guys for watching this video take care bye bye